Now, the problem with doing this is we don't really know exactly how much of these different types of lead there was to begin with. That's right. If we knew how much there was to begin with, we could see how much there is now and work out how much of this decay must have happened. And if, if it's more of this one, it would have been a shorter time span. If it's more of this one, it would have been longer. But we don't. We don't. Um, but there is actually a way to work this out, which is very cunning. OK. So let's, so let's look at meteorites in some detail. Now, the meteorites we're going to use here are meteorites called chondrites. Now, that was different from that previous meteorite we were just looking at, a big that fancy was just a large stuff. chunk of nickel and iron. <laughs> but chondrites are probably the oldest and most primitive meteorites. OK. And if you slice through them, you will see they've got lots of little spheres in them. These are called chondrules. So all of these different chondrules uh, make up the chondrite. Yes. And these chondrules are... You know, maybe the size of your thumb or maybe smaller sometimes and they're probably lumps of uh, rock that got melted we don't quite understand how but some point in the early solar system maybe a blast wave went through or something and it melted a whole bunch of these things they became blobs mm -hmm. of more and then they got included into these meteorites so kind of blobs got included into larger blobs that's right <laughs> technical terms here yes um, now if the chondrite so this chondrite would have included lead and uranium yep and since they solidified, just as the solar system was forming, they've been solid ever since. Okay. So anything the uranium has turned into is still stuck inside these chondrites. So you're saying anything contained in here is essentially stuck in there, and any yes. process stuck in there has been there from the beginning. That's right. So what we're really dating is the time since this solidified. Okay. So when it solidified, everything was stuck, and that meant, while it was still gas, if the uranium decays, produces lead, that lead might get blown away or something. Yep. But if it's in a rock, the lead is still there. Okay. But of course, we just still don't know how much the different isotopes of yep. lead was there to begin with. However, when you look at chondrules in detail, you see they're actually made of different crystals inside the chondrules. So these are different types of chondrules in yep. a chondrite meteorite. And if you study meteorites, you spend your life looking at all these different varieties. But for us, what matters is that when this little blob of molten rock started cooling down, it didn't all cool down to the same thing. Different minerals migrate to different places. What normally okay. happens is as it cools, some minerals will freeze first. Okay. Because they've got a higher freezing temperature. Yep. And they will solidify. And then other ones will solidify at lower temperatures. And so what you do is you get a, it's like a chemical fractionation. You get different minerals yep. condensing into different crystals within it. Okay. And that is crucial. Because if things are freezing at different temperatures, we can measure essentially how much of each is there knowing, because we can measure this well on Earth, when they freeze. Well, we don't even need to know that. All that we care about is that these different lumps have different amounts of lead. Ah, I see where you're going with this. Because there's different sorts of minerals right. which would contain lead in different amounts. So what's really important is that some of these crystals yep. will be lead rich and have lots of these things and some will be lead poor and only have pathetically small amounts of lead. That's right. But that have the same ratio, ratio. of the mm -hmm. different isotopes. So we don't care about the total quantity, we talk about the relative between each one. And whether they're rich or poor, it doesn't matter because the ratios are going to be the same. And the ratios will be the same because they're chemically identical. This is yep. a chemical process of fractionation yep. because they have the same number of electrons, they have all the same chemical bonds. The mass doesn't make any difference. Yep. So the ratio of lead 204, 206 and 207 should be the same whether it's a crystal has a lot of it or a little. Okay. So what's going to happen now, if you have one of these that has a lot of lead, yep. the decay of the uranium is not going to make much difference. Yeah, that's right, because most of it will be there from the beginning. Whereas if you have one with not much lead and lots of uranium, the uranium would also be a bit sorted out, but yeah. again in the same ratios. Yep. In this case, it's going to make a very big difference. Mm. So, cunning, eh? Yeah, <laughs> clever. Luckily that chemistry has worked on our side for once. So what you can do is you can look at the ratio of lead 204 to one of the others. Yep. And they would all have started for the same ratio yep. of lead to or four to everything else. And the one that had lots of lead and not much uranium won't have changed much. That's right. Whereas the one which had lots of uranium, lead to or four isn't going to change, but that's the other right. ones would increase a lot. And that's the key. It's because that lead to or four doesn't change. That's always that starting point. Yep. So here you've got the ratio of lead to or four, in this case lead to or six, but you could use lead to or seven as well or something. Right. Yep. And the ones with 
a high ratio yep. are the crystals that originally had lots of lead and not much uranium. That's right. And, and the ones with a low ratio are the ones that had lots of uranium and not much lead. And so essentially we're then to plot the ratio between the rich lead ones and the rich uranium ones and see how they essentially fit a slope to it. And then you can look at the ratio of uranium 206 to uh, lead 207 to 206. Yep. And remember that's going to change because one decay is faster than the other. So that gives us an age. Yes. But you can look at the ones down here and that tells you what the natural ratio is because these didn't have had a lot of lead and not much uranium. That's right. This is where this line goes up at this side tells you how much different high steps of lead they started with. Yep. And how much it slopes down tells you the age. How much has happened since then. So, Paul, is it really, I mean, because we're talking about ratios here of essentially three different elements. So is it that the same point kind of slides over time? Does the slope change? OK, well, let's think about this. So to begin with, yep. um, everything is going to have the same ratio of lead isotopes. OK, so in the, in the beginning. In the beginning. Yep. So if you look at you know, 10 seconds after the solar system was formed, they're all going to have the same ratio of lead isotopes. OK, yep. And, so that, and you're talking about here the, rate, rate, uh, the 207 to 206 and the 204 to 206. That's right. Okay. Um, and but then as time goes on, you know, some of the grains mm -hmm. have got mostly lead and not much uranium. Okay, yep. Uh, just because of the chemical exactly. fractionation that happened to the different grains. So then they're going to change differently to the ones that have a lot of uranium? Well, they're not going to change at all because the lead's not going to go anywhere. Yep. No, no new okay. lead's going to appear. Yep. So those are going to just stay here. So to begin with, all the grains might be here, whatever yep. whatever primordial ratio of lead okay. right. materialized out of the, uh, the protoplanetary disk. Yep. Um, and the ones that are just lead without uranium, they're not going to move. They're just going to stay there. And they're still going to be there you know, 4 billion years, 10 billion years, whatever. Okay. But then you're going to get the ones with lots of uranium and not much lead. Yep. And those ones are going to move. And they'll move quite drastically compared to the lead only that just kind of sits here. Yes. If you look back at these, you're going to get the, the lead-rich crystals, which have your lead 204s, 206, and 207. Yep. And they're not going to move very much. That's right. Um, the uranium will bump up the 206 and 207 a little bit, but not very much. But you get ones like this where there's not much lead and tons of uranium. So it's going to dramatically increase your 206 and your 207. But the 204, because there's so nothing that produces that, will just stay, stay, the stay same. put. So what we're then using is because the 204 will always stay the same, we can see how they change with respect to kind of something that is consistent across time. That's right. So here I've got a simulation of the whole thing. So again, we've got 204 over 206. And the 204 is the one that doesn't change. Yep. So you've got the top of the fraction, which is not going to change, and the bottom, which is going to get bigger. OK. So if we go back, we remember that 206 is going to be produced from uranium-238. Yep. Now there's a lot of uranium-238, so but it's got a long half-life, so it's going to eventually decay heavily. OK. But it'll take a long time to get there, whereas the 235, less, but happens much more quickly. Yeah. So on this axis, you're looking at 207 over 206. OK. So 207 is the one that's produced quickly from the uranium-235, but there wasn't so much uranium-235. So, so it's like a sugar, sugar hit. Gotcha. So, it's gonna, so in theory, 207 should dominate early, but then 206 should take back over. OK, well, let's run the simulation and see what actually happens. So to begin, we're beginning off time zero billion so, years. So yeah, we're, we're right at the beginning of the solar system. And everything's in the same place. Nothing's, yep. As time goes on. So we're still seeing quite a lot stay here. So this is still the stuff that has either almost all lead or very little uranium, uh, or uh, I guess a lot of 206, but not 207, because that 206 takes a long time. Well, it will. Um, it would also move this way a bit. So okay, these, these ones are going to be all lead. Yep. Um, the ratio of the different uranium isotopes is not going to change from uh, grain to grain because again, yes. it's a chemical process. Gotcha. Um, so you can see to begin with it went up this, so it's definitely going to move this way because the 204 isn't staying the same, the 204, right. and both the 206 and the 207 are going to get more. Well, and, and I noticed, right, until maybe about a billion years we were going slightly up, now we're going down. That's right, so to begin with, the, the uranium-235, because it decays, so it's not much of it, but it decays quickly, quickly, so that's going to give you lots of 207, so the 207 over 206 is going to be high. Yep. For those uranium-rich grains, the lead-rich grains just stay put that's over right. there, but the uranium-rich ones are going to move up here. So to begin with, if you had a solar system that was only a few hundred million years old, you're going to see a slope that goes up like this. Ah. But then as time goes because on... Because now that 206 is coming in, even though it takes much longer, so the yeah. 206 is becoming the bigger number over I mean, here. We're now at 3 billion years, and basically all the uranium 
yeah. pretty much all the uranium-235 is it's gone. gone. Yep. That's why there's so little uranium-235 on Earth, why they have to enrich it with all their... Um, From uranium-238. Yes, uh, um, it'd be much easier to build atomic weapons <laughs> if we were trying to do it four billion years in the past. But, so I'm actually Different quite glad. Story. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, and so now the U-235 has all decayed to 207, so there's no more 207 coming. Yep. 207 is as much as you're ever going to get. So it's just now how much 206 we can produce. Yep. So what you see is that uh, we're now up to you know, about the age of our own solar system, and now it's sloping downwards. But it's also, it's also slowed down in its slope change that once you got here. There's a lot of action between kind of a half a billion and two billion years. Now it's kind of just yeah. consistent. Just waiting for that last of the youth 238 to slowly trickle away. OK. And so to do this, you have to take a chondrite break it up into chondrules, take each chondrule and break it up into tiny crystals. So you're looking at crystals that are about the size of a grain of sand or smaller. So, and, and, and look, in, in the meteorite we're talking about, they're not generally that large to begin with, right? And so now you've got grains of sand, and then in this grain of sand, you have to be able to find the lead. And lead's a pretty rare element. Yes. So there's only going to be tiny amounts of lead, and then very little of that lead is going to be lead 204, because lead 204 is a rare isotope of lead. So you need exquisite precision to be able to break up these grains of sand, find the lead, measure the different isotope ratios with exquisite precision. It sounds a little bit painful. It sounds a lot painful, but it can be done. And it can be done with incredible precision, and it gives you an age. And the age for this particular, this is age just from one chondral. So each of these dots is a different crystal inside one of these So that's marbles. just one of the little marbles in just one of the meteorites. Yes. Okay. And all the different crystals within it, and you see the line fits extremely well. I'm yeah. telling you this model has worked, the, the uh, uranium or the lead haven't leaked out. If they'd leaked out, it would have curved or have Some scattered. Some weird, yep. So this is telling you it's actually, everything's in place, and it gives you an age of <laughs> ridiculous precision, 4.567.32 billion years. So 4 billion, 567 million, 320 thousand years. Plus or minus 420 thousand. So that's not... Bad. That's, I mean, that's bloody amazing. I think. I mean, we we've gone from is it three or five to seven billion to four hundred twenty thousand. I mean, if you're trying to date the pyramids and you had an error bar of four hundred twenty thousand years, you'd be in trouble. If I, if your doctor says, Paul, you may live for four hundred twenty thousand years, I plus or minus twenty plus or minus four hundred seventy thousand. No, no, but for the age of something this far, it's actually pretty amazing. And I guess then the amazing thing in is this is just one chondral, right? So they can measure it in another chondral another chondral, another chondral, and then get another meteorite and repeat the process. You can do this millions and millions of times almost. Yes, and you can also do the same thing for samples of rock from the Earth. Okay. Now the oldest rocks on Earth probably got liquefied, but they're, they're actually only about 4.4 billion years old. That's not far off this. Yeah, that's actually still pretty close. So that meant that at least some little bits of rock on Earth had solidified not long after this. Yep. Presumably the Earth early on was just an ocean of lava. Um, and again, you can find rocks from the moon that were brought back by yep. the Apollo astronauts. That's right. And again, the oldest ones show ages of just a little bit less than this. So we can really start to understand the age, even if it's a difference of 100 million years. That could be the time it took for the moon to form after the solar system formed or something like that. A, a moon and the Earth is a lot bigger than a little small rock. And you can also use other radioactive elements. Okay. So this lead, lead dating is the most precise, mm -hmm. but there are many other combinations of radioactive elements that you can also use, and they all give answers about the same. So we have lots of elements that we can use and lots of reactions that we can measure really well here on Earth. Lots of meteorites from space with lots of these chondrules, and lots of these chondrules have lots of these elements. And the Earth and the Moon give the same answer. There are even a few meteorites from Mars have been blasted from Mars to Earth, and they also, again, show comparable, a bit younger ages, but still talking about you know, three to four billion years. So we're, we're essentially, we have lots of ways to measure Earth, Mars, meteorites from these asteroids, and they're all saying that's the age. 4.6 billion years. Yeah. 